Hello again. The hills of West Virginia are filled with ghost tales and stories, but few are as well known or as beloved as those collected and compiled by Ruth Ann Music. She collected many stories from the Mountain State in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s and used them to compile two books of ghost tales. The Telltale Lilac Bush and Other West Virginia Ghost Tales was published in 1965 along with Coffin Hollow and Other Ghost Tales, which was published in 1977. Tonight, we are going to talk about a West Virginian favorite, the story of the Little Rag Doll. Like in the previous episode, I'm going to begin by retelling the story, then we'll go into the historical context and see if we can explore any of the peoples, places, or events mentioned within the story. Then we'll look at the story from a folklore standpoint and see what stories may have inspired this one. The story begins with a new teacher who had started teaching at a new school in a rural community. The school board and the teacher's landlady both requested that she didn't stay at the school after dark. But she was working on some papers and lesson plans for the next day and lost track of time. Suddenly, she felt a chill and noticed someone else in the classroom with her. A little girl was sitting at the back of the room with her hand raised. The little girl asked if the teacher could show her her assignment and ask the teacher if she had seen her little rag doll. When the teacher got up and approached the little girl, she vanished. Later that night, she told her landlady what had happened, and the landlady told her that the community had been through several teachers. They had all seen the ghost of this little girl and had left town shortly after their ghostly encounters. That is why she had been told by numerous people not to stay at the school after dark. Determined not to be chased off by the ghost, she went home, made a rag doll, and figured out what type of assignment she could give the ghostly child. The next night, the teacher intentionally stayed late, and sure enough, around the same time, the ghostly child appeared again, quietly sitting in the back of the room with her hand raised. The teacher presented her with the rag doll and gave her a homework assignment. This time, the girl and the doll both disappeared. Later that evening, the teacher and the landlady went for a walk to discuss what had transpired in the previous days. The landlady explained to the teacher that there was a child that was murdered in the area years earlier, but the family was never able to find the murderer or the girl's rag doll. The teacher asked if they could go to the cemetery where the girl had been buried at the end of their walk. As they went through the cemetery, they saw setting on the girl's grave the same little rag doll that the teacher had presented the ghost with, and the ghost was never seen after that. From a historical standpoint, there aren't very many people, places, or events to go off of to do further research into this story. In the notes section under the story, it simply says, quote, Bonnie Jean Sheets, 1947, as told to her by her mother, who heard it from her mother. Most stories presented in these books give the name of the individual the story was collected from, the date, and the location, the town, or the county that the individual lived in when they told the story. This story does not have that additional information, so it makes it very hard to try and pinpoint down the location where this ghost story takes place. But many people associate the story with the Dolls Run Cemetery of Core, West Virginia. While it may be unassociated with the story, it is an excellent historical cemetery with its high gate, iron fence, and many old graves, some dating back to before the American Civil War, while others have been rendered completely unidentifiable by time, it's easy to see how such a place could be considered haunted. The cemetery is the final resting place for many members of the core family who settled the region 
and gave the region its name. While from a historical context, there isn't much to go on, from a folklore perspective, there are two main themes I would like to address. New and traveling peoples in ghost stories of the mountain state, and stories that include ghosts that aren't initially identified as such. There are many West Virginia ghost stories that involve new and traveling peoples. Maybe a young couple new to the area get a great deal on a house only to be awoken every night to moans and sounds of chains being dragged through the house. A traveler seeks refuge from the rain in a house they think is abandoned only to have a ghostly encounter with a long past previous tenant. The most common of these tales include the murders of merchants and peddlers. Telltale Lilac Bush has an entire section of four stories dedicated to murdered merchant ghost stories. In the early days before industrialization and widespread rail travel, many of the goods that couldn't be grown or made locally had to be brought in by traveling merchants. Many of these individuals often traveled alone or in small groups through rural areas with large sums of money and goods on them. While many of these stories might have started out as cautionary tales, it's important to remember that the Jennings Gang of Wetzel County built their crime organization on robbing cattle merchants moving their herds up the Ohio River Valley to be exported in Wheeling robbing them on their way back down through the Wetzel County, Ohio River Valley. Lastly, we have to address the concept of ghosts appearing to people and disappearing before those individuals realize they're having a ghostly encounter. This is a phenomenon that has been reported in several places across history and is often referred to as hitchhiker ghost stories, because of some of the more famous stories within this genre. In these stories, the protagonist will pick up a hitchhiker, and as the trip progresses, the hitchhiker will begin to tell their story, typically of how they met their demise, only to disappear from the vehicle before they finish telling their story. It goes even further with sometimes items like pieces of clothes will be left behind in the vehicle. Other times an individual will be lost and will be found by an individual only for that individual to disappear once the lost person is close to other searchers. The tells will usually have a part where the protagonist is told the entire story from an outsider's point of view with sightings oftentimes being connected with the anniversary of the ghost's death. And in many stories, the protagonist will even be taken to the place where the death took place or to the grave of the individual. Hitchhiker ghost stories hit the mainstream when Jane Harold Brunvard wrote The Vanishing Hitchhiker in 1981, but stories and legends date all the way back to a 17th century manuscript entitled About the Sights and Wonders that Preceded the Liturgical Event. While these stories have been told and retold, oftentimes spread as urban legends and campfire tales over the years, my favorite is still the tale of Large Marge from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Rest in peace, Large Marge. Had you heard of the story of the little rag doll before this video? And what other West Virginia ghost stories would you like to see me cover? Let me know down in the comments. But until next time, stay wild, stay wonderful, and I'll be talking to you again very soon.